So graphs are pretty common in a lot of algorithms, so I'm going to go through some of the basic representations and talk a little bit about efficient implementation of the data structures. In particular, I want to talk a little bit about hypergraphs because they show up in many design automation applications. So first, some of the basic te terminology. You've got vertices, these little blue dots here, edges, marked in gray. Pretty straightforward, you can usually move stuff around like this. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. Where they show up is you might have a circuit. Like I've got this AND gate over here, inputs A, B, and C, to, and then a uh, NOR gate over here. And you can translate that into a graph. So input A, this vertex here, AND gate over here. Pretty straightforward so far. For circuits, one of the things you want to be heads up on is you'll have connections that have more than two connection points. So this AND gate A branches off, connects to this door gate over here, connects over to this one. So you've got this hyper edge, and that's the difference between a regular graph and a hypergraph, is a hypergraph has what we'll call hyper edges. In terms of implementing these things, the temptation is probably to go for a simple matrix. So you've got four vertices, and you can just build a matrix, four by four matrix, and have, there's a connection from A to B, throw one into the slot from A to B, and if it's an undirected graph, it'll be symmetric along the diagonal. Very straightforward, easy way to implement it, but it runs into trouble pretty quick. If you've got 10 vertices, you need 100 spots on your matrix. This is a big O of N squared sort of growth. growth. It's going to be okay for small graphs, but once you get big ones, you're going to be in a world of hurt. You've got a thousand vertices, you're talking about a million matrix entries, and if you talk about the graphs that you'll actually run into with VLSI circuits, you're going to be in a world of sadness and misery. So the better way to go, something along these lines. We've got vertices A, B, and C, and D. Vertex A is connected to edge 1 and edge 2, so edge 1 and edge 2. Vertex B connects to edges 2, 3, and 4. And so what you might want to do is implement a linked list, some sort of variable-sized uh, data structure here. So vertex A, it has uh, connections to edges 1, edge 2. Vertex B, edges 2, 3, 4. Vertex C is edges 1 and 3. Vertex D, edge 4. You'll note this, this uh, data structure, you can have as many edges as you want on each vertex. And again, use a linked list, something that will easily grow. And it can vary based on the number of vertices, individual vertices. And in most graphs, you've got a relatively number, small number of edges connected to each vertex. The edge data structure, so edge 1, is going to have a list of A and C. So edge 1 has connections for A and C. And that's how we're working it here. This is a pretty common way to do it in circuit design. And it makes it fairly easy to do the hyper edges. So we'll pop over here. And we have hyper edge connecting vertex A, B, and C, these three commutes. Hyper edge as A, B, and C in some sort of linked list here. And so this makes it extensible and easily scales up to very large graphs.